you believe in the supernatural? I don't believe anything without evidence. You thought it best to dig up the body in the middle of the night? It is a matter of some urgency. Ooh, bad girl. Debuting on May 2nd on Fox, Houdini and Doyle, well, seems to serve the exclusive role of making you long for the return of the recently wrapped Lucifer, whose 9 p.m. first season time slot it takes over. Other than that devilish nostalgia, well, there's not much else to think fondly about in this capricious wreckage. I'm Arthur Conan Doyle, this is Harry Houdini. Now, the idea of a friendship between Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the acclaimed author of Sherlock Holmes, and an avowed spiritualist, and the illusionist and skilled skeptic Harry Houdini is immensely appealing, and has the added benefit of actually being true, though they met after the Great War in 1920 and not 1901, as this show claims. There is a great opposite to track drama, like the imaginary friendship between the great detective and Sigmund Freud in The 7% Solution to be made out of Houdini and Doyle. But Houdini and Doyle is not that drama. I had an epiphany. Do you know who the murderer is? No, but I know that how. my epiphany trumps yours, come on. After a seemingly promising enough opening few minutes, the David Hosselton and David Titcher created series goes downhill even more quickly than these things usually do. And that's even with stylistic elements that have been yanked right out of Peaky Blinders. Essentially with secrets and losses of their own, the two team up in London to solve crimes at the dawn of the last century. Facing resistance from the police, the ever bickering American-born Houdini, played by Michael Weston, and Sir Arthur, portrayed by Stephen Mangan, who has just recently killed off Sherlock Holmes in the books and never seems to hear the end of it, nor do we, are given the first female constable of Scotland Yard to work with. And thankfully so, because the Rebecca Lydiard played Adelaide Stratton is by far the best part of the 10 episode series, as she battles discrimination, a bad reputation, and insufferable scripts. Death isn't the end. With cameos by Nikola Tesla and a young Winston Churchill, the plotting mysteries lose their low wattage intrigue amidst an insulting barrage of reason versus faith arguments that go on and on, and low plot points. The episodes I've seen, in fact, they were an insult to the memory of all concerned. Then the multinational produced Houdini and Doyle, which is already played in the UK, turns travesty into tragedy by employing language so era inauthentic you almost expect the great escape artists to talk about dropping the mic when proving a point to Doyle. I'm here because I can provide a wealth of information about the supernatural. 10,000 American dollars say that you can't prove anything. Got an hour to spare on a Monday evening? Then I say make sure to miss Houdini and Doyle. And maybe crack open one of Sir Arthur's books. I heard he has a way of drawing you in. A lesson this show, again from what I've seen, has never learned. I'm Dominic Patton for Deadline Hollywood.